Hello, Federica. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, welcome to New World Encounters. So, Federica, uh, you recently published a report on changing newsroom and we would like to talk about this today but before we start talking about the report we would like very much to learn a little bit about yourself what is your background of course um, i'm currently the head of leadership development at the reuters institute at the university of oxford um, where i work with the senior leaders and managers in newsrooms um, to help them um, be better prepared to the challenges that the news industry, um, you know, set up for them. Uh, and before that, uh, my expertise is in audience engagement and audience development. Um, I've been working with publishers like Condé Nast, um, but also for a startup um, like Harkin, um, which is a US um, consultancy on audience engagement, on really helping um, newsrooms to put um, the audience at the beginning of, of the, the process and the journalistic process. So I'm a bit of a mix of a journalistic background, but I'm really interested in how culture, newsroom and organization come together. Great, sounds, sounds really good. Um, so that, that means that uh, you really um, had a lot of good background to start this, this uh, report about the changing newsroom. And as far as I understood, you address uh, uh, three very important issues uh, or challenges. Uh, one is hybrid working. Uh, the second one is diversity in the newsroom. And the third one is attracting uh, uh, talent, yeah? Um, before we start and talk about the report, would you like to tell us what is your definition of hybrid working? Yes, of course. So with hybrid working, we, we mean sort of like a, in between um, setup where some people are working, some people in the newsroom or the news organization in general are working from the office and some people are working remotely. And so um, because, you know, we've done it during the pandemics for 18 months, um, but this are like we've, we've seen a change from um, enforced remote um, where everyone due to lockdowns was forced to be at home to a hybrid shift at the moment where, where is possible around the world, because we should remember the pandemic is not over and is not at the same stage and pay, a pace everywhere. But where is possible, some people are in the office and some people are from um, work from home. So uh, it's definitely uh, uh, during the pandemic times, it's, it's uh, the only good solution to have hybrid work. Uh, but tell us, what are, in your opinion, uh, the advantages that you uh, saw uh, when you, you uh, talk to uh, your um, interviews? Yes, of course. So the report, um, I should say it's based on a survey of 132 um, newsroom um, leaders from 42 countries. Um, so it's really like a broad um, um, collection of, of people. Um, and it's a, a non uh, random, not representative sample. Um, so we, we've asked some people um, to take to take part of the survey. Um, and from the survey it comes quite clear that um, hybrid and, and flexible working have um, had some advantages, um, flexibility and efficiency being, of course, one of them. And um, also, um, um, the, the ability of, um, you know, with, with the flexibility come in some cases an improved um, well-being for the, for the employee, but really stress how collaboration, creativity, communication um, is much more difficult um, to, to get right um, in, in a hybrid setting. Okay, so I got it. So flexibility and well-being are the advantages, but creativity and efficiency might uh, have some downsides. Through yes, uh, that's through what that's what our survey says. For example, seventy percent of the people who participated in the survey said that remote working made um, efficiency um, better during during like in, in the last in the last year. Okay. Cool. Um, then I, I would like to ask you um, if you would have some uh, uh, good examples of, of uh, efficient and creative uh, uh, hybrid work. I think what is interesting is that um, even for those um, who are thinking about going back to the office, 
Um, and that's still, um, you know, um, despite, um, you know, 79 percent. Of, of the people in the survey said they are fully committed, um, the, the organization they work for is fully committed to, to work um, in a hybrid setup, and 89%, so even more, are personally fully committed. But really, the question is how to do it, um, and the majority of the people we talked to in the survey, so 57%, said they are still in the process of figuring out how to do it well. Um, to do it well. And that is because I think there are a few questions that are not that obvious. So, you know, who chooses when to be in the office? Is that um, the choice of the employee, of the single employee? Um, is it a choice of each team? Um, and one of the things that um, came out um, in the report from some of the interviews is that even if during the pandemic or during the, the remote um, work, the connection between teams um, have sort of strengthened the broader connection across team, across department, and that feeling of the culture of the organization was much more difficult um, to replicate. Yeah. Did you did you uh, encounter the situation where leaders were not so happy with hybrid working, especially leaders in organizations? I mean, I think still um, 9% of the people who um, uh, took part in the survey said that they were thinking about returning to a pre-pandemic model. Um, so, you know, there is still some people who are not super convinced. Um, of course, we should remember that different type of organization broadcasters, for example, radio production, um, places where you need big studios or big technology, you know, physical um, hardware also, uh, for them might be more difficult um, to do things remotely and for other for other newsrooms might be easier. So I think there is there is a bit of, of, of a difference also depending on what kind of um, production um, you have. Yeah, so... Uh, um, uh... What are the results? Uh, people in the news organization uh, theoretically would like to continue the hybrid work also after the pandemic. Is that true? Yes, yes, that's what that's what the survey says. Okay, so um, what um, the, the other topic that you address in, in your report is the topic of diversity. Can you tell us where are we there? What is the status now in the news media organization in, in diversity? Yes, of course. So I think diversity, um, you know, there is we, the, the survey so shows that there is still um, a lot of progress um, to be made. Um, when we ask um, in the survey, we ask newsroom leaders, um, how do they feel if, if they feel their organization is doing a good job with different types of diversity? Um, and 78 percent, so clearly the majority think that the organization is doing a good job when it comes to gender diversity. Um, but the, the numbers drop when in terms of like ethnic diversity, only 38% say the organization is doing a good job with ethnic diversity, diversity for with less advantages background, um, for example, um, or political diversity, only 33% said the organization, they feel the organization is doing a good job with, um, with political diversity. The mm -hmm. other point in that is what kind of diversity, you know, gender, ethnic, etc., but also at what level of the organization. And so um, there is sort of like um, an agreement from, from the people in our survey, 79% said that they feel the organization they're doing, is doing a good job with a lower level. Um, but um, the more we go up um, the, 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 the hierarchy in the newsroom, the less they feel um, the organization is doing a good job. So only 35% feel the organization is doing a good job in terms of diversity at a senior level. Yeah, so we have a little bit of work to do here. Yeah. Um, but uh, another really very, very, very burning issue is attracting talent so uh, because we, we do have uh, uh, to compete with the big tech giants and they really know how to attract talent so tell me what did you see there in your uh, interviews yeah so the survey um, shows that um, the people who participated newsroom leader who took part in the survey felt that the pandemic made it harder um, to um, hire uh, and retain talent um, but this is especially true in, in some areas. So um, news leaders feel that um, it's somehow easier with editorial um, talent, uh, but when it goes to product, commercial, data and insights and technology, um, it's much more hard for them to retain 
uh, and to, to hire and to retain talent. Um, of course, a bit about it is um, because, as you said, um, you know, there are um, there's a lot of competitions and there are markets um, where salaries might be higher, um, flexibility might be higher. Um, so, um, you know, journalism is not necessarily always a very um, competitive um, industry for some for some of these areas. But I think what is interesting is that, um, you know, some organization are really thought about how the hybrid and flexible working can benefit both uh, the issue of diversity and the ability to hire and retain talent. Um, because of course, from a diversity perspective, for example, big organization and have the headquarters in let's say high, you know, expensive cities like London or New York, um, which already kind of cuts out some of, of the possibility, you know, of, of talent to be based in a city so expensive with the flexible working that really opens up um, much more possibility. Um, Quartz is an example um, we have in the report. Um, they, they fully transition to be a fully remote company and they hire people wherever they are legally allowed to employ people from. Um, and that seemed to, um, they said that they really helped them um, thinking about um, diversity and talent in a different way. Well, that, that's a very important point, because what we noticed here in Germany before the pandemic and before the hybrid work, it is that, that young people and, and talented uh, digital natives do not like to go to, uh, uh, to offices in the province, for example, and they had really big problems hiring talent in, in the rural or, or uh, local areas. So big cities had some kind of an advantage. But now uh, this could be another advantage of the hybrid work. Uh, um, that uh, you can uh, work remotely and hire the talents from everywhere, actually. Exactly. So exactly. That sounds really, uh, really good. So um, uh, tell me now, if you were to give uh, like a, a few key takeaways as a, a recommendation to our network, what would be your key takeaways? What could publishers do that, that really struggle with these three uh, uh, issues? I think um, starting with um, with um, hybrid and flexible working, you know, planning is is crucial in in this stage, and really thinking about how to strike the right balance between flexibility. Uh, and, you know, the expectation for employees that something, you know, we've been able to work remote for 18 months. So the world has changed so much in this 18 months. There is an expectation from employees um, and sometimes from new employees, for example, to really be much more flexible. But of course, organizations have to think about the operational requirement um, of, of the newsroom and of the organization. So striking that balance between being flexible and being equitable um, to everyone um, in the newsroom, some roles might be more um, conducive to, to work remotely. Um, others that require more collaboration might need more time in the office. So really thinking about how to be equitable um, in that. Um, really thinking about what you know, what, for example, very practically, what a remote um, or a hybrid meeting looks like um, when somehow it was easier, when everyone was a, was a square on a screen, um, it gets more difficult when you have some people in the, in, in, the, in, in the meeting room next to you and some joining online. How do you make sure that the experience um, you go through is it's, it's, it's the same for both? And in the report, there are some examples um, of rules that the BBC has put in place to really thinking about how to host um, inclusive meetings and especially thinking about um, in, in the hybrid setting. Um, and linked to that is really the issue about proximity bias. So making sure that, um, you know, those who are there present in front of the bosses in the newsroom um, don't accidentally end up being favorite because they are more present and those that are at home um, are, less, are less visible and therefore um, lose out on opportunities. This is one of the concern. Um, so I think really a bit, it's, it's all about being intentional and really thinking about what kind of rules do you need. Um, when it comes to, to talent and, and diversity, I think when it comes to talent is really thinking about who needs uh, more, um, I want to say attention, but generally, you know, if that sort of like um, 
uh, uh, learning for with per osmosis that happens in the newsroom, you know, a junior reporter sitting next to a more senior reporter and learning from them. If that experience is not the same in a remote working, what kind of mentorship and training opportunity are you putting together for talent to really keep and develop and really keeping the sense of, of culture of belonging in organization? Um, and on diversity is, you know, um, we've asked in the survey what people do uh, in terms of diversity, tracking data uh, and tracking data about how diverse their teams are, the senior management uh, team is, um, is, of course, a first step. Um, what kind of diversity they have in terms of um, contributors and sources. The 50-50 um, project by the BBC is one of the most um, known uh, in, this, in this regard, but also making sure that you have a budget for diversity and it's not just about hiring diverse talent, but really creating a culture um, where the, the diversity and the inclusivity is part of the culture, I would say. Sounds, sounds fantastic. So culture, um, structure, organization, uh, empathy, uh, they are all very important. I ha would have curiosity regarding tools and formats for uh, hybrid working. Uh, did you uh, had any, any trends? Um, <laughs> What is interesting is, you know, we've asked what kind of tools between, you know, Zoom or Google Meet. And of course, you know, there are sort of like individual choices of, of different organizations. Um, I think the tool and, and the workflow um, behind it again goes back to the planning, right? Making sure that you have the right tools, um, making sure that um, you have the right, again, like tools for training, for example, um, but really thinking about um, what is the experience um, for someone joining in um, from from um, from remotely, um, and th simple things like making sure that everyone can see you in the camera if you are in person and not and not online, and therefore some newsroom are really invested, of course, in either bigger screens or you know thinking about the audio um, in a meeting room. So all those kind of you know basic um, tool that can just empower you to have a better meeting and to have a better experience. Thank you, Federica, very much for your time and for insights uh, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to your next report. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me.